good kitten internet. If you're wondering why Isin seems to be so prom uh, dominant in these videos, it's because Isin's room is also where my office setup is. So he and I are roommates while I'm working. <clears throat> anyway, we have to go brave that. It's lightly raining. It's not that big of a deal, but yeah. Because we're going on an adventure during my lunch break. So I better get started. Right, cat? Right. Good kitten internet once more. And I don't know why I bothered saying good kitten internet. I literally just said that to you in real time. It's been maybe two minutes. Uh, we're going on an adventure. All right. So um, first off, something to clear up because I just figured something out. Uh, a few days ago, I had a walking vlog where I was mentioning that my feet were killing me and so on. Turns out I had the wrong inserts in my shoes. Um, it's a good reason as to why they were killing me, because they were the wrong size. And um, because my feet are so ludicrously wide, when I put in one of the pairs of inserts that I have, which are getting thrown away, by the way, is really narrow by comparison to my foot. It's like normal wide shoe size and not square foot size like what I need. So my foot was basically falling off and constantly rubbing up against the side and the bottom of the, or and the area underneath where the insert goes in the shoe. Not exactly comfortable. So I'm actually wearing the original inserts that came with these shoes which is good. Um, I'm gonna be swapping off quite a bit when it comes to holding the selfie stick because it's probably not showing up on camera, although my camera seems to show up a little bit better than what the screen displays, but it's currently snaining outside. Snane, for those of you that do not live in the Midwest, is an unholy hybrid of snow and rain. It's actually snow, rain, and hail in this case. Uh, it's not quite sleet, but it's close. It's Snane. Snane's a particularly ugly weather pattern, if I do say so myself. But we have to go walking today. Technically, it could happen tomorrow, but I don't want to risk it. I'd rather do it today because it is at least possible. So, what is this great quest? We're going to the post office. Yep. That's the quest. We're going to the post office. However... This is a particularly important quest, and I want to talk as to the reasons why, hopefully before my hands freeze, because I have circulation problems in my hands now, thanks to years of abuse typing, and they get super cold super fast now, which sucks. Anyway, um, so the reason why we are going to the post office today is that I received... Um, Yesterday afternoon, so for reference, today is Thursday, the 9th of April, 8th of April, 7th. I don't know what day of the week it is. It'd be the 7th, because April Fool's Day was last Friday. So that means that today's the 7th. So um, we are going to, I'm going to zip this up a little bit more. We are going to the post office because yesterday I received the last piece of mail that I need to get married. Um, for those of you who may not know, I am engaged to be married to my partner, who I've been with my partner for over half of my life at this point. So, and we've been engaged for nine years, slightly long engagement, uh, trying to get married to somebody who's a citizen of a different country than your own is always complicated, and even more complicated when you're dealing with immigration requirements on top of everything else. So, I am going to be getting married in the country of Norway. In order for a Norwegian citizen's marriage to be considered valid, they need certain information. They don't just trust a marriage certificate, which is probably not a bad idea given that the U.S. And their definition of marriage certificate is, hey, look, are you married? No? Cool. Now you are. Um, Norway has much more onerous requirements for that. 
and one of those things is that you have to prove that you're eligible to be married. Which is always interesting, because you're basically proving that something doesn't exist, which is kind of impossible to do. <sighs> I might need to put this away sooner than I thought, because the rain is picking up, and the selfie stick is cold. Mostly metal, so that would make sense. Anyway, um, so the documents that I need include a birth certificate and a, oh, I can't remember the actual terminology now. Editor me can probably put it in, but it's Certificate of Non-Impediment of Marriage, I think is what it's actually called, which is basically going down to your local state's Department of Records and go, hey, look, I'm going to pay you to search the Department of Records to see if you have any evidence whatsoever that I've ever been married. Have a minute for reference. Um, my partner is actually the first and only relationship I've romantic relationship I've ever been in. So, yeah. Um, and then to add further complication, these need to have an apostle stamp on them, which is a term I had never heard of prior to this process starting. An apostle stamp, for those of you in the U.S is effectively a notary public stamp, but for international purposes. So for those of you outside the US, a notary public stamp is a stamp that you get put on an official document signed and authorized by a person referred to as a notary public, which usually like for instance, most offices have at least one notary. Um, a lot of places have notary publics. It's not particularly hard to find somebody who can do it as long as you live in a city like I do, but basically a notary public authorizes that yes, this person did in fact sign this document on this date and I am witnessing the fact and authorizing it. An apostle stamp, similarly, is authorizing that this particular piece of government documentation is in fact authentic government documentation. I forgot a mask. Crap. Okay, be back. All right, let's try this again, although the remote control for the selfie stick is missing. It's probably in the backpack, but I don't really feel like trying to dig through it. Yep, it absolutely was. Okay. Also, the rain or the snain let up a little bit. Feels like it's coming back though, so that's fun. Anyway, where was I? Um, right, so the Apostle Stamp. Um, so I had gone through the process of getting the proof of non-impediment of marriage from the Wisconsin Secretary of State. This would have been back end of September, beginning of October of last year. And went through the process, paid a whole bunch of money, and had the Wisconsin Secretary, or sorry, the Wisconsin State of Records to get the information, then the Wisconsin Secretary of State to get the Apostle Stamp. Anyway, um, went through the process and had them mail it straight to Kreator in Norway. I made sure I paid enough postage for it. Whole nine yards. Um, didn't make it on time. So the idea was that I was going to be in Norway, and there was a chance a reasonable chance, like, given their timelines, a roughly 50-50 shot, that it would arrive while I'm there. Yeah, it arrived two months later. Um, so the Wisconsin Te Secretary of State apparently sat on it for two months, because I could tell from when they cashed checks, and the check that got cashed from the Department of Vital Records was within a day or two, I want to say. Business day, that is. And then the Wisconsin Secretary of State check didn't cash until the end of December. So it arrived, and I started poking through the process and found out that, okay, they also need an apostle stamped birth certificate, which meant going through the um, system online, paying a whole bunch of money, and having it signed by the Florida Secretary of State, because 
I live in a country that's actually 50 countries in a trench coat. So go through all of that. But as I'm starting it, I notice that the requirements say, oh, by the way, we don't consider an apostle stamp valid if the underlying document is more than three months old. Remember when I said that the Wisconsin Secretary of State sat on it for two months? That meant that by the time it arrived to Creator's house, it was probably about two and a half months old already. It was not going to be feasible for me to get a, what call it, a birth certificate to Creator in that amount of time, even if I had immediately realized what had happened and tried to rush everything, which I didn't. Um, by the time I realized there was a deadline, I don't remember if the deadline had just passed or was about to pass, like, the next day or something like that. So, I had to start all over again. So, this process has cost me, I don't know, about 750 US dollars so far? Uh, or, to convert it into a standard unit of measurement, one half of a laptop. I am not going to walk through the park this time, it's a little windy, and it's what? One or two degrees outside Celsius? Ooh, I can hear the wind whipping around. <sighs> Wisconsin in spring. So anyway, um, so I basically do all of this again, and this time I paid for expedited authorization from the Wisconsin Secretary of State, so they wouldn't sit on it for two months, even though it's supposed to be done in 10 business days. And they did, in fact, finish it in relatively quick order. Uh, the state of Florida, strangely enough, went extremely fast. Um, what? I got it the same week? So that was a bit of a shock. And now, the trip to the post office is to get the envelope to ship internationally, legal documents, and go from there. The shipping cost for legal documents and the shipping cost of everything has skyrocketed where this one envelope and shipping it to Norway, admittedly at relatively fast speed, but we'll get to that in a moment, is going to cost me 70 US dollars. Now, by relatively fast speed, so there's a few options for shipping this. I could go with first class mail, except in our time of pandemic, I have no idea how long that will take. There's no guarantee on shipping whatsoever. And these are some really expensive documents. I don't want to deal with that. There is, there are two other options for document sending. One of them takes six to 14 business days, the other one takes 3 to 7. Or is it 6 to 12? I don't remember the exact ranges now, but you get the idea. Basically, a week or two weeks. I'm deciding that the $30 price difference, given how much money I've spent on everything else dealing with this, is a small price to pay to just get it there faster. Give Creator more time to actually fill out all that horrible documentation. Which, speaking of, horrible documentation. So, if you get married in Norway between either two Norwegian citizens or basically as long as you're registered in the country of Norway, this is a really quick process. Um, you go online, you fill out a couple of forms. That's a TV on the ground in the rain. Poor TV. I mean, it's probably dead anyway, but whatever. Um, I'm about to cross a major road, so I'm going to go ahead and pause this. I'm actually not crossing it at the moment because there's too much traffic. I'll go down to where there's a light to cross. Anyway, um, what was I saying? <laughs> oh, right. The rest of the nightmare. So, the moment somebody who is not, does not have a national ID number in the country of Norway, so the equivalent of, if you're getting married, oh, now it starts raining again. The equivalent of if you're getting married to somebody without a social security number in the US. Um, you have to go through a different process. So instead of it being an online form, <clears throat> where you'll probably get a response in one or two business days, you have to snail mail everything. 
and you might not get a response for eight weeks. Why is this process in existence? When, as far as I could tell, it's just going to the county seat, which is, what? Not that far away from where Theater lives? It's simple. It's to penalize immigration. <sighs> I'm so sick of having to deal with anti-immigrant bias everywhere. In the U.S., out of the U.S., pausing and unpaused now that I've crossed the road. Um, just every step of this process is annoyingly complicated for no good reason whatsoever. It's great. So, yeah. So once the papers go out, when Knator receives it, they have... A period of time where the documents are still valid that they need to fill out all the paperwork and send it off. And hopefully it gets approved the first time. Because if it doesn't, like if there's a single bit of documentation out of place or anything like that and they decide to reject it, I have to go through this process all over again. It is obnoxious. It is stupid. For once I can say the U.S. has a better way of handling this. Pretty much the only time I can say that, because U.S. immigration is pretty terrible, too. But, uh. so anyway, all of this is so I can get married, hopefully in the next month or two, but probably more like three months. And then I can finally start the process of immigration, which that takes three months after submitting the paperwork, assuming everything goes right, although... They're now saying up to three months instead of it being, what was the number before? Basically six to nine months. So I know they sped things up. There was a piece of legislation that went through that sped up the process, but huh. all of this, be able to move to Norway and to be with my partner. That's the whole reason why I'm going through any of this. And the face full of sleet Actually, at this point, it's just rain. Face full of rain, not helping things. I am walking directly into the wind, I think. Feels that way, at least. I don't have to cross any major road, any more major roads, at least, so... I may end up stopping recording just because I can't see very well. Oh, hello, burp. Oh, I'm not gonna get that fast enough. Large. I believe that's a crow. Crows are in, which one's the smaller one, ravens or crows? It's a corvid of one variety or another. <sighs> so yeah, I'm taking my lunch break today in order to go to the post office to submit this. That's why I have a backpack on me, mostly to protect the contents from the rain. It's not a waterproof backpack, but it's the best that I have, and it's in an envelope inside of the backpack anyway fill out all that documentation, pay even more money, mail it off, then walk home and continue the rest of my work day. Did I mention that I'm flying out day after tomorrow? <sighs> so, might as well talk about that since I have a little bit before I reach the post office. So, my mother passed away shortly before the pandemic started. So, December of 2019. And I've mentioned this in a vlog before and lots and lots of rage tweets and so on. But the process of trying to get my mother's things, so I initially decided to have a storage company move it into their storage. That was another boondoggle. Then tried to get it out of their storage. That was a bigger boondoggle. Then they tried to go after me for money after I no longer had anything in storage and ended their contract. Illegally, may I note. Um, they shoved me into call queues that would hang up on me immediately. They, just a really nasty experience. But I finally got the stuff out of that storage unit, which almost came to requiring the police to arrive, because that's fun. I wasn't even there for that. And then it's currently at in my grandmother's garage. And I want to go through that stuff, figure out what's going to get ship back to me, and it's heavier rain, of course it is, uh, figure out what gets shipped back to me, what gets donated, 
what gets, I don't know, given to friends and family. So I have to be there for that because I'm the one that has to go through that. And I also um, need to take my mother's ashes back. And so at some point, I need to go spread them in New York City. I'm going to stop recording for a bit because I'm crossing a bunch of roads. All right. Masks always get caught in my glasses. Rumble. Finish that. Now I can walk back home. And I'm going to have to work slightly longer today because I took longer than my lunch break. Fun. But it is mailed. It should arrive quickly. Yep, I have everything. I wanted to make sure. So I've messed things up multiple times in this process. Don't want to mess things up again. Forget that. I am done with this. So, um, yeah, I'm just going to be walking back home. It's warmer outside now, and it's not raining in my face, so both positives. This actually would have been almost perfectly timed if I had remembered my mask. Because it's, what, currently 1229? And I lost probably about 10 minutes walking back and forth from my house. Yeah, actually, this probably would be right about right. Oh, well. Not that big of a deal for me to work next 15 minutes today. Or tomorrow. Maybe I'll do it tomorrow. So I have a flexible working schedule. So as long as I get 40 hours done during the week and I make all of my meetings, it's kind of relevant as to when exactly I work. Which is good, because I'm relocating to Norway, and I'm not necessarily going to be on Central Standard Time when it comes to working. That's a major reason why I accepted this position, was because they came at least close to my salary requirements, and they actually are allowing me to be flexible. <sighs> the insert in my right foot is dissolving. Cool. Or disintegrating, not dissolving. Dissolving would require a liquid, and outside of sweat, there shouldn't be any liquid in my shoe. I am particularly harsh on shoes. Um, I think I've mentioned the story before, but I have literally walked into a shoe store and tried on every single shoe that they had in my numeric size, and none of them fit. Um, and my numeric size is a normal, common one. It's the width that's completely uncommon. Again. I have square feet. Ah. Get a view out this way. This is the weather right now. Doesn't it look great? Isn't everything perfect? Yay, Wisconsin spring. Ah. Anyway, I need to pause for a moment as I cross a major road. Crossing a major road, nearly getting hit by somebody who's paying too much attention to the food that they're eating rather than driving and not noticing the fact that there was a lit crosswalk where people were actively crossing. <sighs> there are a lot of times where I hate being a member of the Permanent Pedestrian Club. And it's not like it's feasible for me to take a bus here. So if I were to try to take a bus from my house to the post office, instead of a, I don't know, is this about a 10 minute walk? It would have been a five minute walk to get to the bus stop, sit on the bus to the transfer point, wait at the transfer point for a half an hour, then get back on the exact same bus and have it loop all the way around to almost where I got on it at. I am literally Two stops. Two stops? Three stops. Sorry, I forgot there was a stop in the middle. Three stops from the post office, but in the wrong direction. And 
not all of the buses here operate in both directions. Mine does not. So, and it only operates once an hour, thanks to the pandemic. So, yeah. It would take me substantially longer to take the bus than it would be for me to walk. This is... I was yesterday talking about the reasons why... Some of the things I'm going to leave behind when I move to Madison that I regret. I mean, I don't want to... Huh. Out of your complete coincidence, the delivery vehicle for Glass Nickel Pizza just walked by. Great job, brain. Um, drove by. But... Um... One of the things I definitely won't miss is how really crappy the public transit system is here. And the really sad part is that Madison is the best public transit of any place I've ever lived. It's just that bad in the US. <sighs> so, because I don't live downtown, I live effectively in middle suburbia. Suburbia is designed with cars in mind. The modern American suburb, the whole concept was that everybody would drive everywhere, which is one, a terrible concept, two, money losing concept because cities can't support that, and three, really, really horrible for people who don't drive. I live in the suburb because it would be very expensive for me to live downtown. Not to mention noisy, smelly, a lot of other things that would not be so great. And my partner wouldn't have wanted to live there. So I bought my house with the idea that my partner would be coming over to the US more often. But Trump happened and thus we decided to flip our plans around and I'm the one moving to Norway instead of my partner moving to the US. Anyway, um, right, public transit. So, all the public transit in Madison is concentrated in the downtown and campus areas, which is great for the people who live there, not so great for anybody who doesn't. And because I live in a suburb that has relatively low usage of the bus, because the buses don't actually function correctly for people who live over here, that means that the city of Madison deprioritizes us, which means even fewer people use the bus, which means we're deprioritized more, and so on. Um, so, my new job, the office is actually in downtown Madison, and pre-pandemic, if I were to go to downtown Madison, my commute time would be about 20-25 minutes via bus. Unfortunately, they decided to remove the bus that went through my neighborhood at the start of the pandemic, and have flat out stated they will never allow that bus to resume service, and in fact, all of their plans for a future of Madison transportation just have that area gone. There's no surface in my neighborhood. There's just surface around my neighborhood. The aforementioned loop I mentioned. Only they're actually somehow making it even worse. So that's fun. Um, so yeah, my commute time, if I wanted to go to the office, is an hour in each direction. By car, it's 15 minutes to get from here to the airport. It's probably about 15 minutes outside of rush hour to get to the office as well. Maybe a little bit less, actually. Maybe more like 10. Do you see the problem with this? This is not a viable way of continuing. So the city of Madison lies within an isthmus, um, nestled between two bodies of water. It's not particularly wide isthmus either. I think the narrowest point might be seven or eight blocks wide. Which means that trying to drive into or through the isthmus is really hard because there's only so much space that you can have to drive. The proper way of handling this, assuming that I lived in a nation of puppy dogs and rainbows and unicorn farts, is to have very, very good public transit and then ban cars from the center of the city because it's not viable to have the population density that Madison even currently has in the downtown area to drive constantly. 
they're only saved by the fact that a lot of the people who live downtown are college students, which don't have cars. Or not all of them have cars. The city projected that it's, what is it, like in 10 years or so, it will no longer be viable to drive downtown at all during, like, business day type of thing. Just because the sheer amount of traffic is literally impossible for any of the roads to contain. So unless if they, oh, I don't know, decide to put a highway that goes directly over the Capitol building of the state of Wisconsin, or a highway that goes under everything, which, again, nestled between two lakes, not exactly viable to have a tunnel like that, you're stuck. So the city of Madison decided to go with what's called BERT, or Bus Rapid Transit. Bus Rapid Transit is effectively a bus with a dedicated lane. It's not great, but it's all that the city of Madison could afford because the state government has blocked a lot, and I mean a lot of different ways of handling this situation because the state government is all in on the screw Madison front. Even though the state government is in Madison. I don't get it. So these are some of the things I'm definitely not going to miss when I move to Norway. Um, because I am going to be moving to Bergen, which is, again, as I mentioned last time, about the same size city as Madison, slightly larger. What? Madison's 250,000 and Bergen's 265 or something like that, or 295 maybe. So, close enough to the same size. But, the public transit is far better. Um, if I live the equivalent distance to downtown... Bergen as I live to downtown Madison today, I could get downtown in less than 15 minutes by a bus. And not just once an hour, but more like 15 to 20 times an hour. Is it 15 to 20? It might be as low as like 8 times an hour. Still, the point is, way more often. And again, same size city. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed this random walking ramble. <sighs> Be nice if the soles of my shoes didn't deteriorate this much. I need to find... I have two pairs of shoes with the exact same inserts. I need to find the other one because this is not going to be viable when I'm traveling. Oh yeah, uh, I forgot to mention. So, vlog stuff coming up. So... I will be, and so this is being released on Friday, that's the 8th, I'm recording a vlog on the 8th, that will be released on the 9th, but on the 9th is when I start my trip, with my flight leaving at 5.45 in the morning, <laughs> um, which means that I'm going to go silent for a while. I'll have internet access for work purposes, and I'm probably not going to upload any vlogs because my only internet access for personal purposes is my phone, and I have metered internet. Each vlog would cost me 10 US dollars, basically. So, probably not going to see much of me in the next week. I don't know. I may end up just uploading while I'm working. But they're going to be really quick vlogs anyway, because I'm going to be with family. And hopefully not catching COVID in the airports. So, I'll talk to you then, Internet. Bye.